Welcome back to another episode of Sidecast. Uh, Hello. Today, we are your hosts. I am Chris. With me today is Justin. Hey. And today, we're going to do a side of Kingdom Hearts 1. Yes. Slash Kingdom Hearts Final Mix 1.5, whatever. Yeah, because that's the game we played more recently. More, Yeah, it's the, I'm actually right about to finish it. So, uh, good place to start, as always, is... Uh, this is another one of those instances, as it seems to be every other instance, where Justin inter- got introduced to it first <laughs> and then showed me about it later. So, Justin, tell me about how you got introduced to Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I saw an awesome commercial when I was a kid. It was the uh, – I don't know if you remember when you like leave the game on at the, the like new game, load game screen. If you just let it sit, it will go and it will play like a cutscene. Yeah. Well, it was basically not that whole cutscene, but there were scenes from it. it. You know, it did the like Sora and Jack run up, and then it's like Little Mermaid and Pooh, and you know, like it goes through the different worlds, and you get to see glimpses of Disney, and then obviously you see it, it's just kind of like, well, what the fuck was this? I always liked Disney growing up, and uh, I like Final Fantasy, and then I just kind of saw that, and I was like, holy shit. And then uh, I got it for Christmas when I was a kid, and I played it, loved it, played it, played it, played it a bunch of times. Played the second one. I remember when I got the second one, I, like, got up at, like, 4 in the morning because my parents went and got it the night before I had school in the morning. Right. And uh, I remember getting up at, like, 4 in the morning so I could play it before going to school. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I like Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> you know, I don't uh, – do you remember around what age you first got the game? No, uh, it, when it came out. So whenever it came out, 2000, 2001. So I was about probably like 10 or 11. Probably. Yeah, it came out in uh, 2002, September. 2002. Okay, so I was like 12. Uh, oh, no, September, I was 11. Yeah, so you were about 11 years old. And that's and the funny thing is uh, the way I got introduced to it was I'm pretty sure in high school – we were sitting and you were talking about it, and I was thinking a Disney game because at that point, every Disney game I ever played was kind of subpar. <laughs> but you were saying, yeah, it's really hey, good. The Bugs Life game on the N64, a Bugs Life game, that one was pretty good. Never played it. Oh, you should play it. It's pretty interesting. I mean, it's not great, but it's okay. But uh, you said check this game out, and you even—I think you even lent it to me—is how I ended up playing it. Okay. And, uh, it's all downhill from there. I mean, that's just kind of... What do you mean downhill? You mean uphill? No, because it was downhill because it was super fun. Not uphill because it oh, was... Oh, because it was... Well, I mean uphill as in, like, it got better and better as it went. Oh, okay. Then, yes, it just I became Not a huge fan. Not necessarily harder and harder. Became a huge fan of that ser- that franchise. Even though, to this day, I've really only played uh, two and, like, a half games. <laughs> But, and there's a lot of games in the franchise, but... Yeah, I've played Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts... Chain of Memories on the Game Boy Advance, not the remake or whatever, the, the re-release or yeah. remix. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, 358 over two days. Um, Did you finish that game? No, nah, I, I got like halfway, but we... Yeah. Together, both Chris and I, we watched the, uh, the like full cutscenes for it from the final mix. Yeah, from uh, 1.5 1. comes with Kingdom HD Hearts 1. Mix. Yeah, it comes with the remakes, and it, and it has Kingdom Hearts 1. Final Chain Mix. Me- Final Mix, Chain of Memories, both playable. and then, It's the Chain of Memories version that was remade for PlayStation 2. Which is, like, just better graphic-wise. Other than that, there's no difference. And that, Well, there's uh, better cutscenes, and there's actual voice acting and stuff, I believe. Oh, okay. Other than that, it, I'm pretty sure it plays pretty much the same. And then we got to watch the cinematics for uh, 358 over 2. Or is it 356? 358. Okay. Because it's this the amount it's not the it's not the uh, a year, it's the amount of time he was there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which was just over a year. Right. 
So mm-hmm. I guess... Uh, Which was decent. It wasn't bad. I guess the very first thing to talk about, I think, is the opening cinematic. Yeah. Which, dude, I'm sure you got used to it because you had played, I'm sure, played Final Fantasy games prior. It was so weird and different for you. Oh, it it was the best. What the fuck is it, going on? It was so good because, I mean, I've seen some games with some pretty good cinematics, but this was just, it blew everything else out of the water. Yeah, Square always strives for really pretty cutscenes, which is one of the things I always really liked is they would have these really pretty cutscenes, but it wouldn't detract from the rest of the game. The game would still be really fun and solid, but then they put in the little extra to make the cutscenes really enjoyable too. And they're like just going back through like some of my favorite Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, 10. Sadly, I didn't play 5 or 6, but 10, 12. There's like, I just remember scenes in the game where it's like, oh, cutscene time. Oh man, this is really badass. Yes, and there are a lot of cutscenes in the Kingdom Hearts games. Oh yeah. Oh, they they just love to. Not, <laughs> no, not... there's not. We've already been over this. Remember, there's not a lot of cutscenes in any game except for Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> I was gonna say they are the top tier. You're basically watching a movie. You're playing. <laughs> you're playing a movie. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, and then that just that opening screen, the music. The, the piano? Yeah, it was like, wow. I can play is... that on guitar. It's really easy, actually. It doesn't sound that hard, but it's just... It's very atmospheric, and it's very... It like, immediately, I was like, wow, this is probably going to be a very, very good game. Yeah, very story-heavy, and I actually really like that. And uh, so I'm pretty sure the way it opens is you're on Destiny Island, right? Well, Basically, what... well you mean gameplay or the intro cinematic? Both. No, I okay. guess in the intro you're falling, I think. You're falling through the... You, like, look up. You're on the beach. You, like, look up, and you see, like, stars falling, and then zooms in on one of them, and that's actually you falling, and then you, like, fall into the water, and you're underneath Kyrie standing on the water above you, and Riku's got a wave, and it's just, like, really crazy. But then eventually you sink... You kind of sink down into the... I can never remember what it's called. I always want to say Station of Serenity, but I don't think that's correct, and that's in the second game anyway. Oh, uh, okay. But you, you, the the big the darkness world with the stained glass platforms. You know what's weird about that intro? Now that I think about it, it doesn't give you any clues really as to what you're going to be doing in that game. <laughs> yeah, nothing. It's just really pretty. <laughs> yeah, and it's supposed to draw you in. Although I have to say, I do like the Kingdom Hearts two intro better. And I do like the intro song Better Sanctuary or whatever. Yeah. In the second one. But for what it was, being the first game in this in oh, this yeah. franchise, oh it was just It was awesome. It was a treat. So it was uh a treat. Was oh it- and real quick while we're on the t- the topic of cutscenes, did you ever see the secret cutscene at the end of Kingdom Hearts One? Deep dive that like teases for Kingdom Hearts Two? You know I did, but I didn't do it the legitimate way. I didn't oh, okay. earn it. But I you did see the cutscene. I saw it later, yeah. I remember just geeking out so hard, like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, we need another one, holy shit. You see all the Neo shadows, and then the fucking dual wielding, and it was it was pretty cool. Yes. I was, it, it, was, was uh, it was a treat. So Yeah, and we always thought, like, back then, anybody who was speculating was like, oh, the dude with the blue hair, that's gotta be Riku. Then this must be Sora, but, spoiler alert, it wasn't. Well, one of those is true, but which one well, is it? Well, which one is it? No, there's going to be spoilers, so I don't think it really matters. Yeah, but that's something we'll spoil either at the... We'll do it in, later, when yeah, we do that game. Yeah, because that's a uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 reveal. Yeah. So, uh, so the very isn't the very beginning of the game you start off on Destiny Island? Um, as, right after the, the dream sequence where you choose your character, then yeah. Yeah. Which, the dream sequence is cool, because you get to pick your, like... What is it, the sword, shield, and the wand? Yeah, you get to pick which one you want to do. Which I gotta say, I always played sword because that was the most fun for me. Well, d- depending on what you choose, it uh, it like changes how your character will grow. You'll learn abilities at different levels and whatnot. And okay. I, I always went for defense because it, it got me guard pretty early, more health, more like armor, uh, well, more accessories, more item slots, because I always played defensively. But actually, in this recent playthrough, replaying of the game on uh, Final Mix, Proud Mode, because that's what I always play, I went, I tried to make it harder, so I'm pretty sure I went into offensive, but then gave up defense. Ooh. And the difference, like, is staggering, because 
Like, I'll die in one to two hits. Everything hits so goddamn hard from what I'm used to. But at the same time, like, I will cleave through bosses. As long as they don't hit me, I will destroy them so fast. Like, when, I, when you fight Riku at the end the first time, uh, without Donald and Goofy, like, holy shit. He could not touch me. And I just, I, I feel like a fucking chainsaw. A, a, a keyblade key chainsaw. Just constantly just beating on their face, hacking through them, doing crazy amounts of damage. It's, it's very satisfying. It really is. It's it kind really of a, uh, is. <laughs> but I always played, uh, I always gave up magic because other than cure, I was just kind of. You just didn't care about the magic. I just didn't. There's but... actually a lot of really, like if you use stop against certain enemies, it's really, really helpful. If you use oh, don't get me wrong. gravity, it's, like it's I, really helpful. It's not that I never use them, but I would use them only in conjecture with trying to hit them with my, with my weapon. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in conjunction. Yeah, as in I would like freeze them, or I would I wouldn't really use like Blizzard or Fire, unless I was trying to stay at like a, a range from them. Yeah. But I'd use a lot of like stop and gravity to slow them down so that I could get up on them. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So the first world, which is what Destiny Island. Uh yeah. Is that where we start? Yeah. So. Uh, and all you have to do is you know. Get logs and eggs and fucking rope, fish, water, a cloth. But did you get introduced to the to a lot of? Well, I guess really only three important characters on this island. The rest are just kind of there. Yeah. But they're still. It's still cool. The little reference, if you if you know, you see Titus, and it's like, oh look, it's Titus. That's cool. You see Waka. Oh shit, it's Waka. You see Selfie. Oh my god, it's Selfie. Now, but you, that's really as far as it goes. When you <laughs> played kingdom hearts for the first time had you played the final fantasy games that they were from yeah when you saw did you know they were going to be in the game uh i didn't know specifically that they were but i knew that it was like at least a kind of blending of the two because oh, okay. uh, i'm sure in the the opening cutscene you see cloud at some point you know that that cutscene when you first see him where he's walking out to the arena because he's up and you're walking back and they do that kind of like where they walk past each other and he looks at you and he's just got that. By the way, side note: this is the coolest Cloud has ever looked, in any medium. He this is the coolest he's looked with the fucking the scarf and the the Vincent inspired golden claw glove and the yeah. fucking taped up Keyblade. This is easily the coolest he's looked. But I'm well, sure that's like a glimpse of that scene happened, and so I'm sure I knew that at least some characters were in there in some form or another. But obviously, I didn't expect to see these here. You know, and to actually fight them, that was pretty cool. You know, uh, you, I think what you mean to say is Blade. He had a taped up Blade, not a Keyblade. Oh, did I say Keyblade? Yeah, yeah but, I, meant, uh, I meant Blade, Sword. But yeah, see, which which Final Fantasy is Sophie? T- isn't Waka from uh, 10? 10, yep. Titus is from 10, and Selfie is from 8. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, Chris doesn't play them. I he don't. Hasn't, he hasn't played Kingdom Hearts, the, or uh, Final <laughs> Fantasy. I've played... Uh, 12. I played well. I played a little, little, little bit of ten, twelve, <laughs> and then a little yeah, bit of a little, 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 little bit of ten. Like the first mini boss that you fight, I get up to about that point. Okay, the, anybody who's played the game at the very beginning, when you go to Baj Temple and you fight the giant fish that tries to eat, tries to eat you, that's as far as he got. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and then, he's a son of a bitch. And then thirteen, and in thirteen he got up to. When you get uh, Snow's, man, I cannot remember 13 that well. The the motorcycle chicks, the ice chicks. Yeah, the first time you use them. That's as far as he got. Yeah. Which is it's just like it's too linear. Well, it's going to be like that for a while, but then it opens up. Yeah, but a, a really long while, dang. Not that long. Yeah. But what did you think of, uh, since this introduces the three main characters of this? Well, I guess not really, because... Kyrie, for the most part, isn't a main character. She's just kind of the driving force for the chain of events. Yeah. Uh, you don't really get a... Uh, she's, uh, she's a driving force. She helps, kind of. Well, she she moves the plot along. She's the reason Sora is going out to all these different worlds. But not the only reason. He's also looking for Riku and Donald and Goofy. Once he like accepts them with him, he's also looking for King Mickey. He's just looking for people. That's... Yeah, he's just traveling, searching, 
trying to kind of helping people out as is his job as a keyblade master, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's just that's what he do. Like though there are personal motivations with Kyrie, but as far as for the story going, it's mostly his duty as the keyblade master to destroy heartless. That's what's driving him. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But uh, so what did you think of First of all, we'll get to the main character last because that's probably the most we have to talk about is the main character. So what do you think is yeah. of Kyrie in this game as a character? Not which She definitely gets better in the second game, but in this yeah. game she's just there's not really a whole lot to say. She's just she's just a little girl. Like <laughs> although I think she's like 14, but she doesn't really do a whole lot, say a whole lot. Well, she is the one of the princesses with power. Princesses of heart. Of heart, yeah. Yeah. So. Which is cool. And I like that her backstory is kind of awesome, where she came from Hollow Bastion and all that. Yep. But as far as what you actually see her do in-game and all that, there's really not a whole lot I can say. She's pretty much... I like her, but I don't... She's, I don't care. She's as in, far as this game. She's in the intro, you know, when you're on Destiny Island. She disappears, yeah. and then she comes back, I want to say, second to last world that you ever go to. Yeah, I think the first time you actually see her is Neverland. And Riku has her, her body. Yeah, and she's unconscious, and you don't know why. And, and yep. uh, Yeah, and then in the end, all, all the, what's funny is he spends all this time trying to find her. And then they do, but then they get separated. Yeah, exactly, the very end. Which, explain that to me again. Why do they get separated? She goes back to Destiny Island, but he doesn't because he I don't can't. think... Well, I think he could go back to Destiny Island, but I think the reason he doesn't is because he's got the Keyblade. Oh. It's, like, still his duty to go out and do shit or whatever. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know exactly. He does plan to go to... Oh, you know why? Actually, if you remember in the ending, when they're walking through the grassy field, they even say... Now, how do we go find King Mickey, or how do we go do this? Because they're still yeah, they on got, quest. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They got to get Riku and Mickey out of the Dark World. That's why they don't go back to Destiny Island. And actually, in the because I never played the Final Mix version before, but in the Final Mix HD remix, there are extra cutscenes. Yeah, and they actually help explain a lot. Like, there's one that I I didn't even know exist, didn't even know existed, but it's when. I want to say it's after you beat Riku, but he's like in the dark world and Mickey shows up and it, Mickey's just kind of, uh, you don't see him. You just hear a voice, but you can assume it's Mickey. Yeah. Because he says he's got the Keyblade of this world. So, oh. but he's talking about how to close Kingdom Hearts, you need four people. You need two on each side, a key and a strong heart on each side. And uh, so I guess Sora is both the key and the strong heart and then Riku's the strong heart and goku's the key or, or goku uh, <laughs> i don't know i don't know where that fucking came from. <laughs> yeah really what is that all but what is that called uh, a freudian slip yeah I, I don't know i guess i was thinking about goku but i don't even have like a picture of him in front of me i seriously have no idea where that came from because but, you know uh, because it's because riku reminds Mickey you a lot of uh goku is uh sure sure <laughs> that's probably it that's probably it uh speaking of what do you think of riku as a character i think riku's awesome yeah. I wish he was the main character. I he, like Riku way more than Sora, though Sora definitely does some really badass stuff, and I don't have any problem with it. And him. he does get better over time. He definitely does. Yeah. Like, he's so badass, but Riku is just so much cooler in my mind. Now, do you remember uh, why he joined Xehanort? 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 Xehanort. Xehanort. Well, why he joins Ansem? Ansem's Heartless. Yeah, yeah, Ansem's Heartless. Uh, well, basically, the way it, it's been happening through the story, as you know, as far as I've been playing, is Maleficent starts to get to him first. And uh, she's just kind of guiding him, trying to use him, well, not cultivating him in a way. And he starts letting the darkness in more and more because he can see its practical application. It's, it's straight up power, right? Right. But he's, he's, he knows he's strong of heart. Like, that's one of the really cool things about Riku is he knows that he's strong of heart. Like he he gets it pretty 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 much from the start. Like I don't know if you remember right at the beginning on Destiny Island, he's like, "I'm not afraid anymore." He like holds his arm out and he's like, "In the darkness." Yeah, that's like yeah. You know, if as long as you know what you're doing, 
the 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 darkness isn't as bad as as you would think. You can utilize it, but then as the story goes, Maleficent kind of changes him more and more. And then when you when you're at Hollow Bastion, he's really starting to let the dark in, and that's when Ansem shows up and influences him. He gets the Keyblade. He unlocks, you know, Maleficent's heart. She becomes a dragon, and when you beat it, he's like, "I guess she was just a puppet of the Heartless, also." And then like in that moment, Ansem has taken over Riku. Pretty much. And then, uh, although I think there was a part where Riku like met him at one point when he was a kid, or something, but I, I you know, I don't remember about that. That's a birth by sleep thing. Well, no, I mean, I think there was like a cutscene where Riku was a kid and he was in that cave, and uh, that door. That's actually the heart of the world. Yeah. But I think Ansem might have been there, hooded or something like that. Oh, okay. But then, obviously, Sora also meets him at one point. It's like, we do know that... It's connected, Tide of the Darkness. That's Ansem's Heartless. We do know, not from this game, but we do know that the reason why uh, Riku kind of goes towards the darkness is the, the guy that gate... Because in this world... By the way, neither of us have played Birth by Sleep. No, we just seen it. Yeah, so we this see. is kind of speculation. In a way. In a way. But, well, we, we, we saw that, that timeline on YouTube, yeah. and that explained it, but... Uh, the way you become a Keyblade Master, I, or being able to wield a Keyblade, is another Keyblade wielder has to kind of choose you, mm-hmm. and then they do something, and then suddenly you're able to do it. And the guy that shows Riku is uh, Terra, and Terra is kind of not a bad guy, but he does get taken over by the darkness, and so that's Anor. right, which is a whole long story that's gonna. That I'm so excited to play. Yeah. After we're done with this, we're gonna probably do. Chain of Memories and three five eight over two days as like a, a joint thing, as a smaller episode. But we're we're gonna do King Hearts two, and uh, Chris has the the KH two point five Final Mix HD remix whatever. Yeah. And on that they've got Birth by Sleep, so we'll both eventually end up playing that and doing that one. I'm actually really excited because you know I love these games. Pretty much. And. Uh... So yeah, Rika's a really cool character. He's obviously like a reflection of Sora because he chose the dark side and Re- and uh, Sora didn't. Yeah, but then Sora's it gets all about. Yeah, but they they have the same goal in mind. They both want to help Kyrie. They just figure their way is the better way to do it. And to be fair, Riku's way would be better, but he just he just got cocky. Why would his way be better? Because if you can control the darkness. He would be more powerful. He just flew too close to the sun in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. He got too big for his britches. Unless the light is just inherently stronger, but the darkness usually is shown to be stronger. For yeah. For the most part. Except at the very end of this game when Kingdom Hearts is light and then it destroys Ansem, but that's a different kind of light. That's the, the heart of all worlds. Yes. So unless all light can get that powerful... The darkness just seems inherently stronger. Pretty much. So, um, before we move nice. on to Sora, I want to I want to I want to tell you this uh, this journal entry for some of the characters on Destiny Island. Okay. So for Waka, it says a boy who lived on the Destiny Islands. He looks out for Titus and Selfie like a big brother. Nobody knows what happened to him after his island disappeared. Yep, he's just gone. He that just- sucks. He just disappears afterwards. He's probably one of the people, many people who just was lost. Yeah. Became heartless. I don't know if he ever comes back now that I really think about it. Probably not. But uh, Titus, a <laughs> cheerful, self-confident boy who lived on the Destiny Islands, he considers himself a champ at everything. Nobody knows what happened to him after his island disappeared. Yep. <laughs> Is uh, And then Selfie... A spunky girl who lived on the Destiny Island. She's rather impulsive and quite the romantic or romanticist. Nobody yep. knows what happened to her after the island disappeared. <laughs> wow. Be, uh, you yep. know what's funny, though? Selfie does show up in Kingdom Hearts 2. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know... Although the worlds all got put back together, didn't they? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. So. Uh, but it's funny that they say quite a romanticist. I don't remember her dialogue ever implying that she was a romantic. Yeah, because she's like... Uh, when you talk to her, I think the second day, she says something along the lines of like, uh, uh, if you share a palpu fruit with someone, they say your destinies will be intertwined. 
It's so romantic. I got to try it sometime. Uh, or some, you know, something like that. Something like that. All right. Mm-hmm. Kyrie. It's like, hey, baby, I'll, I'll share the destiny, or the destiny fruit. I'll share the power fruit with you. Power fruit with you. But you. So Kyrie says, Kyrie, Sora, and Riku always hung out together. When their island vanished, Kyrie lost her heart. It turned out that it was hidden within Sora's. As one of the yep. princesses with the power to unlock the secret keyhole, Kyrie restored Sora's heart when he was turned into a heartless. Yes. In reality, though, he turned himself into a heartless because he unlocked his own heart to try and set her free. Because Riku even Riku tells tells her, "Yes, you have Kyrie's heart in you. That's where she's been all this time." Yeah, and Riku's Keyblade doesn't unlock the heart of worlds; it unlocks a person's heart. Yeah, and so that's why he uses it. And then, uh, and I actually remember the scene where Kyrie flies at him and then disappears. Yeah, she goes to grab him. Oh, no, never mind. I thought you meant that scene when he stabbed himself. She goes to grab him as he falls, and he just turns to, like, light. Yeah. But, yeah, at the very beginning, she puts her arms out, and she flies into him, and he catches her. And she disappears, and you're like, well, that was weird. Uh, I, can, I guess, I don't know if this is true, but I, I can assume that that's when her heart... Went in, yeah. When it happens. Yeah. And then uh, Riku says, Islander, a self-confident youth, always competing with Sora. When the Destiny Islands vanished, so did he. By the time Riku reappeared, Sora had already found new friends, so Riku didn't rejoin him. Riku is willing to go to any length to save Kairi, even joins forces with Maleficent. I know, I wish Riku would have stayed with you. Yeah, but he does feel like you betrayed him. I forgot about that. He feels like you betrayed him. Because oh, you fact, just replaced me this fast. Well, replace both of them. Well, yeah. Yeah, and he feels like, oh, you're just going to give up on Kyrie because, you know, why give up on Kyrie? We were the best of friends, and then... But, see, that's the thing. Sora's dialogue during that scene doesn't, like... If Riku's just being a little moody bitch or something, you know what I mean? I mean, Sora even says, I've been looking for you and Kyrie. We've been all over. Yeah. He's just like, oh, wow, I would never have thought of that. Damn it, Sora, you're better than I thought you were. Dang. Good on you, bitch. Dang it, Sora, why you gotta be so good? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, <coughs> and then Sora, which I guess a good way to start is by the journal entry, the one who fights the Heartless upon reclaiming the Keyblade from his rival Riku, Sora sacrificed his heart to free Kyrie and become a Heartless. Kyrie's deep feelings for Sora restored him, now he must confront Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness. Pretty much. Do you think there's like a romantic thing between Sora, Kairi, and Riku? Uh, I don't think Riku has anything with Kairi, but Sora and Kairi do. Yeah, that's that's kind of clear. I think Riku just cares a lot for them because they're his best friends. They're Yeah, they're his best friends. Yeah. He seems like the loyal of the three. Not that the other two aren't loyal, but kind of like... Uh, like Ron in Harry Potter. Ron's just kind of like loyal to the other two, and he doesn't really... Although in this case, Riku does a lot more than <laughs> than Ron, but... Yes. You know what I mean? Riku has a really interesting arc. I mean, Sora learns some things and, and uh, becomes stronger, but Riku go through, goes through a lot of crap to get, where mm-hmm. he, to get where he needs to get. And even then, in the second game, he goes through even more crap. He loses his form. He, Pretty much. he gives in completely to the darkness, but he loses his form and ends up looking like uh, Ansem. Ansem's heartless. Even though it's technically Xehanort. Or, uh, yeah, it's, it's Xehanort. It's not Xehanort, it's Xehanort, the assistant of Ansem. Because I'm pretty sure Xehanort is this guy. And then, because, ah, man, I, I gotta play Birth by Sleep to know this like definitively. So, but so but I think Ansem's assistant Xehanort is yes. a different Xehanort than Master Xehanort from Birth by Sleep. Yeah, Master Xehanort, something happens to him and he fuses with Terra, which is why he looks the way, why Xehanort and uh, Xemnas look the way they do. It's because they look more like Terra than yeah. the Master Xehanort. Or Master, okay. uh, an, uh, yeah, Xehanort. And then he calls himself Ansem after the real Ansem, the Wise, which is Diz. Yeah. Voiced by, what's his name, Christopher Lee or whatever? I don't know who that is. Um, Count Dooku. Oh, dang, that's cool. Diz, yeah, any voice by that guy? I don't know. I thought. 
I know that uh, Sora is voiced by Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> nice. Which is so funny to me that they got Haley Joel Osment to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, Colleen Clinkenbeard? Yeah. That's Luffy. That's where I got that name from. I was watching One Piece, and I saw in the credits, that's the voice of Luffy. Oh. So. Okay. So what do you think of <laughs> That's Super- just an aside between us. Yeah, we were, ta- we, we were pretty big One Piece fans, so... But that's, well, I'm becoming one. I still haven't even hit episode 100 yet, but it's great. But you're getting there. So, by the way, the guy mm-hmm. who voices Riku is a guy named David Gallagher. Okay. Uh, yeah. He's mostly, he's actually, video game-wise, he's only known for playing Riku. Oh, wow. Sh- well, that's cool. Yeah. Because Riku's awesome. And then, it, looking at his stuff, he hasn't really has done much else that I know of. But, so there you go. So what do you think of Sora as a character? I think he's pretty cool. I don't dislike him. Okay. But I always like Riku more. Sora really starts to become really badass in the second game. Oh, yeah. But in the first game. He is a kid, though. Like he's Yeah, however- he's like 15, I want to say. Sora? Yeah, he's like 14 or 15. I thought he was. And then Riku was one year older. Well, I thought he was much younger than that. Nah, I'm pretty sure they're not like twelve. They're they're a little bit bigger than that. Um, that's a good question. I'm trying. Does to, it say his age? I'm trying to figure that out. I I don't. I thought he was uh really young, actually. Well, I'm open up a web page right now. Yeah, pretty much. We we got to figure that out, but uh, we gotta know. Uh. Yeah, so <laughs> not to not to have any dead air, but so you do like him as a character, then? Yeah, I think he's pretty cool. Okay, he's 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 a good uh, hero. Hero. Mm-hmm. So, and he always does some pretty cool stuff. Regardless of how old he is, you know. He's a good. He's 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 a very he's a fun character. He's pretty much just kind of happy go lucky the whole time and uh, loves adventure and just wants to go and completely abandons his mom. By the way, <laughs> yeah. like like his mom is there. She only has one line in the entire game, and it's just like, yeah, I'm not even dealing with you, mom. I got I got crap I got to go do. <laughs> yeah, I've got the worlds to save. Yeah, so none of your crap right now. <laughs> Like, uh, hilarious. Isn't it? And then his mom dies, supposedly, or or goes to wherever all the other people on Destiny yeah. went. And, and here's the thing: he never goes back. Like in Kingdom Hearts two, he never goes back either. So yeah, as far as we know. Yeah. So his mom is probably just sitting there, like, "Oh, my kid disappeared." Unless Kyrie went up and was like, "Yeah, hey, your 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 son is off saving worlds right now." Mm-hmm. So it's kind of it's kind of cool though. Yeah, my son, I don't know about your son, what's he, like a, a fucking doctor? Yeah, is he a doctor? <laughs> my son is the whole reason everything still exists. My son is the chosen one. <laughs> Which actually, isn't Riku that's supposed to be the Keyblade wielder, but because Sora has, like, Ventus in him or whatever, it chose him? Yeah, nobody really chose, like, okay, the way I hear it is Riku was chosen. Kyrie was accidentally like something about her and Aqua. Mm-hmm. Some accident happened, and then she was able to wield it. And the only reason uh, Sora was able to get it is because Ventus is in him. Yeah, that's why Roxas looks like Ventus and not uh, Sora. Exactly. So, uh, so it's just cool and all. So I guess but, you uh, know. we should talk about Destiny Island as a as a place as a level. Yeah, it's decent as an opener, but as a tutorial level, it's, yeah, it's just boring until the Heartless show up. But of course, that's gonna happen. The game is really fun, and I think the Heartless and the fighting system are a huge, huge, huge reason as why. Like, you can only get so far off of Disney and Final Fantasy, but right. the Heartless, I love them. I love the idea of them. I like that they're kind of silly, but they're dangerous, and they they change their forms based on where they're at and. When you first get that glimpse, like, oh shit, there's a storm, we gotta go to the raft, and then there's just the darkness everywhere. You can't even hurt it, and you're like, holy fuck. The darkness, yeah. Exactly. And it's, then, it's, 
pretty cool level, but obviously the little go collect the, the eggs and the fucking coconuts and get some fish and some it, water. It all is that's a very good kind of tutorial of level because it does set up like the world and the 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 fighting mechanics and how deep the game is. Because if you recall, there's the scenes where they ask you questions. Like oh yeah, what, like what is you, winning really that important and just stuff like that? Yeah, and I guess depending on why you answer, it changes your skill stat. Your stat growth. Yeah, your stat growth, like how fast you gain levels. I think. Yeah, so that's kind of cool, and uh, but yeah, which I also tried to what in this recent playthrough to make it even harder. I also tried to make that the the like worst. So I think I started my journey in the dead of night or something like that. Oh. And it's been hard. It's been a tough playthrough, but. It's also been a lot of fun because of that, and I've gotten way better at the game. There's also, uh, for those of you who haven't played it, there's a race that you do with Riku. You don't have to win it, but if you do, you get like a, what is it? Uh, like a high potion or something? No, you get a pretty stone, which you can sell. Yeah. There's actually and, and you get to name the, the raft. That's another thing. Which doesn't really matter, but it's just kind of a... It's kind of a nice thing. A little nice. But yeah, that's a really easy way to, to farm up a little bit of money early on. Just beat him in the, the race a few times. Because I think you can sell the pretty stones for like 100 each. Dang. So, so it's decent at the very beginning. But obviously, once you get further, it's not going to matter. But what I really liked is that you could go and fight Titus and uh, uh, Selfie and Waka and even Riku. And I like that Riku was definitely much harder, but if you just knew how to fight him, he was a pushover. Like, yeah. you could beat him without ever getting hit once. Okay. By the way, there's only one treasure in Destiny Island, and it's a protect chain. Yep. You push a box over to this area, jump on it, and then you can climb a ledge. Yeah. Yep. So I think that's really all we have to talk about for Destiny Island. Well, the last thing is uh, it was really cool that you could fight all three of the kids at once. Oh, yeah. And it was hard as fuck, but I did beat it. Did you, did you not remind me of In this of recent a... playthrough, I mean. I, did, I was able to do it one time, and it, it took me so many tries, dude. <laughs> All you get is like a high potion or a potion or something out of it, but you get satisfaction. I had a beating all three of them, right. You know, yeah. Titus has the, uh, that pole that he uses. Yep, stick. Is... Yeah, did you know uh, in Dragon Ball Z, Goku has the same stick? He's, he calls it a power pole. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, it looks exactly like it. Same color and everything, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. But it doesn't extend. Oh, you do also get introduced to, um... Uh... You don't know who it is at the time, but, uh... Zan Xanort. Well, I Ansem's heartless, but yeah. Yeah, Xanort. No, I know, he but... he call himself Xanort? No, he calls himself Ansem. Oh. Xehanort's Heartless is Ansem, because he calls himself Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, but Ansem, comma, the Seeker of Darkness is Xehanort's uh, Heartless. Xehanort Terra is Heartless. Yeah, Xehanort Terra. Heartless. Yeah, okay. The Assistant's oh, okay. Heartless. But you do get to see And Ansem. then Xemnas is his nobody. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, well, I think we're good to move on to the next uh, island. Well, the next world. The next world. Which, by the way, it's funny to me because uh, they call it the Destiny Islands, but you never really see any other island. Yeah, not really. Well, actually, before... Oh, and there is one final boss, though. Oh, the Dark Side? The dark Side. Is it the Dark Side or Dark Side? I think it's just Dark Side is the name of the Heartless. Uh, yeah, the po supposedly he's one of the easiest bosses in the franchise. but He really is. But that's because he's supposed to be. He's supposed to look intimidating... But he's actually super easy. Yeah. He's a little bit hard on proud mode because you don't have anything yet. But as long as you aren't just bad, he's not too hard. Because <laughs> uh, you don't have heals or anything yet. So. Yeah. You don't have the... Yeah, nothing. You just have to beat him through skill. Yeah. But that skill threshold's not very high. No. So... Before they, before you actually get to move on to the next world, there is a cutscene dealing with Mickey and Goofy. Well, actually, Mickey's not there. Mickey disappears, but it shows Don Donald and Goofy show up. Yes, and uh, it's actually a good way to uh, talk about these characters. Yeah, let's talk about Donald and Goofy. I love them as party members. Well, there's a bunch of other characters. 
minor characters that we'll probably talk very briefly about. Like uh, Jiminy Cricket. He's he doesn't really chronicler. He's a chronicler. He doesn't do anything, but it's kind of it, it. It makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah. I gotta say, I do like Jiminy in this game because of that. It makes sense that he's chronicling it with you, and like as a gameplay thing, having the Jiminy's journal is is helpful for gameplay. Knowing where the trim, what trim, trinities are left, knowing the Dalmatians and just things like that. But it's cool that they gave it an actual like in-world explanation why you have it. Right. So, I, I'm okay with Jiminy. He gives a, gets a thumbs up for me. His, uh, his, his journal is, That's me, the cricket who keeps Pinocchio to the straight and narrow. I'm along on the quest as the royal chronicler. Nice. So That's much. true, he is. And then another minor character's, characters is Chip and Dale. Yeah, and they run your ship. So They run the gummy ship, which we will talk about. Trust you me, we will talk about the gummy ship once... <laughs> Once we get there. Once we get there. But Chip and Dale are, are okay. They're not super annoying, but they're just they're, there. They're not, they're not, not super endearing. Either. Yeah, they don't do They're just kind of there. Yeah. Uh, theirs is one of the kingdom's specialists. This is Dale. Helps maintain the gummy ship, which can travel to, to any destination. Compared to the more serious Chip, he takes a happy-go-lucky approach to life. Nice. And then... <laughs> Chips is the same, except for Chip is more serious and dil- diligent than his easygoing, playful partner, Dale. Okay, very nice. Yeah, if I like the two of them, if only for the fact that they tell you when tournaments are ready. Because yeah, <laughs> I, I love doing the tournaments in the Coliseum. They're just kind of like, hey, tournament, ah, oh, sweet, thank you. Like, yeah, and good on Chip and Dale. Two more characters, Daisy Duck and Pluto. They don't do, again, anything. They're just kind of there. Well, and Minnie. Yeah, and Minnie. They don't really do anything, although Minnie does do something in Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, but... She they, kills Heartless with her heart magic, these, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen it's it pretty yet. pretty awesome. But, uh, these three, they're just there. They're there because they're the biggest Disney mascots, so they kind of need to be there. Yeah, exactly. But I don't think they do anything after this cutscene. Like they never show up again. Um, they might, but they not in any like super important way. So let me tell you what it says here about uh, you know Daisy Duck, Pluto, and Queen Minnie. Okay. So Daisy Duck, Donald's sweetheart, she's helping yep. Minnie with the others looking for King Mickey. She has Donald under her thumb and does a good job of keeping him in line. <laughs> What a bitch. Yeah, really? Wow. That's a good way to describe uh, her. <laughs> Pluto, Mickey's faithful dog. Pluto is more than a pet. He and Mickey are bound by strong ties of loyalty. Pluto sets out with the others to find his master. Will that famous nose of his lead him to Mickey? Does he have a famous nose? I don't know, I guess. Uh, yeah, I've well, never... What about this? Isn't Goofy one of his faithful dogs also? Oh. <laughs> oh. But not humanoid dogs, apparently. Yeah, Pluto's like a dog, and Goofy's like a dog man. He's like a dog man. And man. then uh, Queen uh, Minnie. Minnie? <clears throat> Minnie Mouse. Yeah, Queen Minnie. Queen of Disney Castle, ruling in Mickey's absence. I, Jiminy Cricket, am accompanying Donald and Goofy as the royal chronicler of her at her request. Queen Minnie is more concerned than anyone about the king's disappearance. Yeah. 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 Also, side note, she actually, uh, the very first appearance of Mickey Mouse was in Steamboat Willie, which is also where Minnie made her debut, so they're, they've been around for the same amount of time. Damn, I didn't know that. Yes. So, I guess actually before we do Donald and Goofy, because they are more major characters, what do you think of M- Mickey's part in this? Um, <clears throat> hmm. Well, he's just, he's there kind of as a... Well, first of all, a goal. we got to find King Mickey. But then he's also kind of this nameless power. You hear that he's really good and all that. And you just get, you start getting this idea of what he could be. And then those, those little glimpses where he shows up, it's like, oh shit, it's Mickey. Like you get, I guess it gives you this feeling like you understand Mickey is very important for some reason. Yeah. And they do that really well without him like really ever showing up until the very end. And then that little glimpse you get to glimpse you get to see of him when he pops out and he lights up and he's got a keyblade and stuff. That really helps to affirm like holy shit. 
Mickey's actually kind of a badass. And but then he, obviously he becomes a more badass in the second game. But. I mean, you see more of him. Exactly. In the second game. And you'll learn more about him, too. you learn about his master, Yen Sid, and how he learned to use a keyblade and shit like that. Pretty much. And, uh, yeah, and this description says, King of Disney Castle, he sets out to learn more about the darkness and left instructions for Donald and Goofy to find and follow the key bearer. No one knows where King Mickey is now, but they are determined to find him. Exactly. He's just kind of off doing important work. Do they, does they ever say why he doesn't tell them, like, why it was such a secret? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. He just kind of like, yeah, later, guys. Maybe. I'm, I'm done with you. This is what I have to do. Guess that's because that's, that's what Mickey sounds like. He's very high pitched. It's hard to take him seriously because of his high pitched. Later, Douglas. <laughs> yeah. So off to the probably the most major characters besides Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Yes, I like them. Which do you? Okay, in. You know when you when you go to worlds and you get a you can trade one of them out for that. Who do I usually trade out for the new character? Yeah, it depends on the role, but more often than not, it's Donald that I switch out. So you keep... Goofy's just really useful. Goofy's a powerhouse, man. But Donald's really well, good. I don't I don't use him as that. I use him very defensively with MP gift and shield techniques. Oh. I make him block. Uh, like say like a, a large body is gonna he smacks his belly he's gonna run and hit you. My yeah. Goofy is set up in a way that he'll just run over and put a shield up and just block him. Like, he plays defensively, and he just throws his MP to other my other party party members. Okay. And then I use Donald as a healer with, like, super high attack. Because yeah. he's got v- Violetta. Yeah. So it gives him, like, 11 attack. And then myself, I just go nuts. I go ham. <laughs> but you tend to have... You, I also do the same thing, but that's also because I used Goofy very offensively and Donald... Was just my healer, but I'd always switch him out for a, a better. Of, I basically just offense the entire game. Well, the one like I could usually just keep Donald and Goofy throughout the whole game. Yeah. But at one point in the game that I always switch him out for proud mode at least is uh, when you get to Tarzan, switch Donald out because at that point he's just really not that great. Yeah. He dies too easily, which is a problem he has throughout the whole game. He's just too easy to kill. But you don't have any healing yet, and Tarzan comes with lots of strength. You can set up his ability so he's got a lot of crit, so he does a lot of damage, but then he's got healing herb, so he can throw heals, and I think he can also use arrow. Which oh, is okay. which is invaluable against which is one of I say it's one of the hardest boss fights just because of its point in the story. But yeah. when you fight Clayton and the stealth sneak, yeah. You need Tarzan because you don't have any other form of healing besides potions. Yeah. You don't have so. cure yet, which is Cure, what you get right after that point. Cure is so important in this game, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it really, really is. But, uh, yeah, so what it says for Donald is, Royal Magician, skilled in magic, but short-tempered and stubborn. Because Mickey said to follow the Key Bear, he once left Sora to follow Riku, but friendship soon led him back to Sora. You know what's sure. funny? You know what's funny? Uh, n- never did Donald, like, show in any of, like, before this game, they never showed him being like a magician of any sort. So the fact that they made him the wizard, the magician kind of... Really? Are you sure? I don't remember ever seeing him be a, a magician in anything. But I do I do like it. He's much smaller than Goofy. Goofy's the knight. Donald's yeah. the, the mage. Like It makes more sense, I feel. And then... Donald seems like he's probably smarter than Goofy. Yeah. And he's very hot-tempered, which is just funny. He's just... Mm-hmm. Goofy... Captain of the Royal Knights, he avoids fighting whenever possible. Mickey's most loyal subject, because Mickey said to follow the key bearer, yeah, same thing with Riku, but his most loyal follower, so more loyal than Donald. Yeah. Dang. Dude, he's goofy, man. He's, he's goofy, man. How do you like the, the, the two of them as, well, well, first of all, which one do you prefer? Goofy. Gameplay-wise. Always goofy. Goofy always. Okay, but, and how did you I, like the way they they played as? Well, since you could change up their styles, it really was up to you how you wanted them to play. I know, but they still had their their specific roles. You know, um, how did you like the? Let's do it like this. Okay, how did you like the character, the character's abilities, and how did you most often use them? Well, character wise, they. So let's start much, with Donald. The, Donald is pretty much exactly how I figured he would be if he was a wizard. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, their characters are pretty spot on to what I would picture if they were in that role. That's how yeah, they would course. act. Of course. Uh, what was the second one? Their... Well, I like Donald much more as a healer than as an actual offensive spell user because I just feel like because he uses up his mana so fucking fast, yeah. a lot of the time he's just useless. And sure, he might be able to put out some, some decent damage with his spells. I just feel like until the second game, he's just too lacking. Yeah. And so he just works so much better as either someone who stays right by your side, never attacks, and just focuses all his energy on healing, or as a stack strength on him, make him... Because he, he, like, fucking... He attacks kind of fast. Like, he gets right up in the enemy's faces, but the problem with that is he just dies in one hit. Yeah. But if you if you put a shit ton of strength on him, he does hit fairly hard. Yeah, some and of his wands... You can make him kind of like a, a paladin. Some of his wands actually make it so that he, de he deals more physical damage. Yeah, they're like hammers and stuff. Yeah. And sure, they, they reduce your total mana, but if you're using it only on heals anyway, it's not as, you know, imperative. So, for me, Donald, I always made him more like a paladin or like a healer. Yeah, that's pretty much how you have to run him. using his offensive spells. That's how you have to run him as a healer. You don't have to. Well, I mean, it's the safest way because that oh, way yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, of course. dying. But What do you Who? like about it? Do you like any of his abilities? A lot of his abilities are just the same ones that you and Goofy get. He just gets them way earlier. Yeah. Earlier. I I don't like, really remember any of their abilities offhand. I know he gets one where he shoots lightning down on a lot of people. Well, yeah. Well, he has all the normal spells. Yeah. I just mean, like, he's got MP Haste, MP Rage. I'm um, not going to lie to you. I don't remember much of the abilities in the first game and what they do. Basically, early on, he gets a lot of things that help him regenerate his mana faster. Oh, okay. But with things like, I want to say MP Rage, it, it, you get more back when you take damage. The problem with that, the reason I don't really care about it on Donald is he just can't take any damage. It's fantastic on Goofy and Sora, but Donald just dies too fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, okay. But MP Haste, it just improves the, the, the MP regeneration rate or something. That works pretty well. Right. Uh, that's like it. <laughs> like They didn't have a lot of really focused set setups until the second game, obviously. Right. But I think he got things like well, Leaf Bracer, he gets... That's that's imperative for the way I play. That makes him a perfect healer. That's uh, the one that makes it so... If Even if he takes damage, it doesn't stop him from casting heals. Okay. So, hmm. uh, so basically, my final verdict, I like Donald as a character, especially late game, but only as a healer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> so, yeah. And then Goofy... Goofy. Well, hold on. You have anything else to say? Not really. About Donald, nothing. Not really as a character. I mean, it just. Well, how about this? Did you ever get his ultimate weapon? Oh, save the queen. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Did you? Did you like it? Yeah. I thought it looked pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And of course, it was it was good, obviously. So. Of course. All right. I guess now we can move on. <laughs> move on to Goofy. Goofy yeah. is, is again same thing, but in his case, I used him as a brawler. Yeah, you gave him strength shields and made him all powerful. Yeah, pretty nice. much. Nice. And like I said, I'd keep him normally around more than Donald because I used valor form more than wisdom form. Well, I'm talking about specifically Kingdom Hearts One. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, I just keep him around because he's he's a brawler, and like you said, Donald's kind of weak in the beginning, so I just kind of kept Goofy around more. Yeah, in the beginning, Donald is just kind of there. Goofy right. always in the very beginning. I always make him attack heavy yeah like a tank but then uh, after you get to a certain point that's when i switch him to defense and then the moment he gets mp gift that's all he does <laughs> okay he becomes a mana battery i just kind of load him up with with stuff that gives him more mana because the reason mp gift is so good is it takes one of his mana and it gives three to somebody okay. so i just load him up on like right now i think i have him with the dream shield which gives him two mana and then his two or three accessories or whatever are all plus MP. Okay. And I just make him defensive. And that's kind of how I use him. I use him as a, a mana battery. He, he blocks attacks and he gives MP to everybody. Like, I don't even have him use any of his special abilities. Tornado, rocket, none of that stuff. Nice. Yep. So it's pretty good. And then 
Save the King, I thought yeah. was pretty cool. He does get a lot of cool shields. I think one of the cooler ones was, do you remember the Heartless with the... The Defenders? Yeah. You the, get like, their dog shield. shield? You get their shields if... With three eyes. It's a really rare drop, but you can get yeah. his shield. Yeah. It's really rare. I'm actually at a point in the game where I'm going to start farming for it. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a little while. But they're... Basically, at this point in the game, the Heartless are, like, going rampant. I don't know if this is the best place to do it, but they're, like, rampant all over the world, all over every world. There's just, cr like, it's a huge, like, level level up for all the enemies. Yeah. Well, in Traverse Town, in the area where you fight the guard armor, the third district. Yeah. You can fight, I want to say, like, six, seven, eight of them. So, you just keep farming that area, because they keep popping up. Right. Like, you fight one, and then, like, three more pop out, and then I think, like, another three more pop out or something. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, so, it's not too bad. And it's the same thing with the the wizards, to get the, the wand for Donald. Obviously. You know, I got a couple of uh, tidbits here, a little trivia for you. Yeah, yeah. One of them is, Goofy has actually been around longer than Donald. Okay, cool. He came, cool. Out, he came out in 32, Donald came out in 34. Damn. But Pluto is actually long older than both of them. He came out in 1930. Son of a bitch. There you go. And another little bit of trivia. Uh, in the trailer for Kingdom Hearts, mm -hmm. the Disney castle was going to be a playable level, but they took it out. Oh, okay. They put it in the second game. Yeah. Cool. So I think that's since that's mostly just a cutscene. I mean, that's all there really is to talk about for that game. Yeah. I mean, for that, uh, for that game, for that, for that uh, section. Yeah. You wouldn't actually get to go there until Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. And then Traverse Town is what comes. Traverse Town is what comes next, which is, which a, is a great, like, this is, like, really the first level. Yes. This is, like, the hub. Exactly. You know, and it's, it's, it's a, great. I like it. I love the music. Do you want to start with the place, or do you want to start with the characters? Uh, we'll start with the, the world as a whole. Okay, so yeah, it's a good kind of place. It's kind of got a uh, what's what am I looking for? Like a like a a very warm feel to it, like a home homey feel to it. Yeah, it's like a almost like a sanctuary. This yeah, is, I like the idea that it's a place where people can flee to in the destruction of their worlds. Yeah, and then uh, you get to meet a lot of different characters, and it's actually pretty big. Yeah, it's uh, it's decent. You know, that's where you get to see... You, and there's a lot of, like, mini things to do. You learn about the Trinities there, and you learn about the... Uh, Merlin's there. Merlin's Fairy there. Fairy Godmother's there. The book... Uh, Winnie the Pooh's there. Sid is there. Yep, for the whole gummy, gummy ship stuff. Thing, yeah. Um, a lot of Final Fantasy them, characters obviously. end up being there. Yeah, exactly. What ends up happening is I think they even say that when your world gets lost, a lot of them end up going to Traverse Town. Mm-hmm. Because I guess that's a thing you can do is you can just go to Traverse Town if your world gets destroyed. Yeah, somehow. Somehow. They don't explain that, but somehow. But dang, there's a lot of characters. Oh, the Moogles make an appearance. Yeah, it, it has the synthesis shop. It's also where Geppetto ends up. And it's also where the shops are. So Traverse Town has got everything. It's got the most amount of characters. What did you think of the... Uh, the like postcard side quest where you had to find the ten postcards. It was okay. Well, it was... A, did you ever complete it and get all ten? And B, what did you think about it? You know, I never did. That's the one of the collector things I never finished in any playthrough. I did. I got all ten. And I've done it in this playthrough also. You can get almost all of them pretty early on. You just have to wait until the Moogle shop opens and Geppetto gets there to get, you know, the last two at least. Oh, okay. So that's probably why you never got them early on. But probably not. They're in some pretty easy places for the most part. But you get some good stuff out of it. I think you get like a strength boost, AP boost, defense boost, etc. Yeah. So it's worth doing. I think it's a cool little thing. It's just a fun little mini. It's like a little side quest that is very inconsequential. But you can get some good stuff out of it if you actually do it. Yeah. It's like the definition of what a good side quest like small side quest is yeah you do it you get stuff out of it but you don't have to do it to complete the game yeah and it's not, not even like a hassle that's the big part it's it's cool yeah i like it same with the trinity marks the trinity marks are pretty cool too but and i the, like that you have to use sword donald goofy because it gives you more 
like reason to not just switch out for the new person on each level. Right. It makes you have like a little bit of a choice. True that, but it does suck that you have to wait a while because you'll run across Trinity marks that you can't activate yet. Yeah. And you have. But to... then it's cool because when you finally get that Trinity, you can go back to it if you remember and get some good. That's stuff. the thing, though. You have to remember. Oh yeah, there's a Trinity mark back there. But granted, Jiminy's yeah. journal will tell you how many you have left, so you know, yeah. kind of have a general. In total, idea. though. Yeah, not, not yeah, from the not, not from, from where, the but... world, but yeah, in total. So then you just kind of have to remember: Did I get one from this world or not? I usually. Get I usually like look around and try to get as many of the blue as I can the moment I have blue, right? And then I won't go back and find them until like green, and then I'll go back again once I get uh, white. Okay, okay. So that I can like instead of going back individually each time I I remember just kind of do them all in little little groups at once, and then you get big influxes of treasure. It's kind of cool. Probably one of the easiest little mini games is the Dalmatian one. Yeah, because you just open chests. You just open chests, and then that's it. But so. it's another great one because it gives you something to look for in within the worlds. Right, and, and I think it's steady. You get uh, gradual rewards if you keep going back. Yeah, you have to go back to Travers Town, drop off the, and it's kind of cool when you go back because you actually get to see the room fill up with Dalmatian with the puppies. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So n- another one of those just great side quests. Yes. And another reason why Traverse Town is such an awesome place. And I really like the music. What did you think of the synthesizing thing? The synthesis shop? Yeah, like to synthesize your materials. As a mechanic in the game? Yeah. I think it's perfect. It's great because it, it gives you more than just grind for experience. Now when you're grinding, you have a chance to get items and stuff. And then those items, you can make stuff out of it. It's pretty straight, pretty straightforward, but I think it's a great system and I like it. Pretty much. That's what I'm thinking. I do like how the Moogles are there. I mean, they're, oh, not, yeah. they're not... Are they in the synthesized shop? No, it's Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yeah, no, they are. Huey, Dewey, and Louie own the, the item shop. The item shop. The oh. Moogles do the synthesis, yeah. Well, okay. You know you can get a Keyblade awesome. in this world, I think. You can get one from Pinocchio. Yeah. yeah. Come back, you get the... Uh, I want to say it's a wishing star. It's not that great, but... No, but it is... You know, if you're it's one of those... It's cool to have. If you're a completist... Or, yeah, completist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, looking at my notes here, and we touched on a couple of these, real, like, just a little bit, but we didn't go into as much depth as I would have thought. I forgot I had these. <laughs> Anything about Travis <laughs> you know, Town? Uh, well, not specifically, but one from earlier is when we were talking about the builds. I have written offense-based versus defense-based and uh, the massive DPS. I kind of yeah. touched on it a little bit, but... Like I could, I can't stress enough. Just real quick, when you go fully offense based and you max out your strength, and that's all you do, holy shit! The the difference is night and day. When you're defense based, you don't fucking die, but you it like it takes forever to kill stuff. But it's the exact opposite when you go full offense based, and it's actually a lot better in a lot of ways. If you don't get hit, you wreck everything, man. And especially towards the end of this game, I've been really seeing the difference because my strength has gotten, you know, high enough that, like, I, I go to a defender. For all extents and purposes, it should take 10 minutes to fucking kill him. Obviously not 10 minutes, but, I mean, you're, you're supposed to use gravity to reduce his health, but I don't need to because I just destroy him so fast. Wait, I think it gets it gets a lot easier once you get the dodge roll. Oh, yeah, do- and that's the thing. In this playthrough, was the first time I ever used dodge roll. I use dodge roll and guard. I always use guard, but I never use dodge roll. And in I, this playthrough, I actually did, and it's fantastic. Like I love it. Dude, I hate guard. I hate that fact that you just stand. There. I loved the dodge roll, <laughs> like getting out of there. Well, I love the guard because I love knocking shit back. Yeah, that is kind of a nice little. Uh... Plus, I uh, equipped tech boost. Uh, two tech boosts. That I got early on, so I used guard as a way to get a bunch of extra experience. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Which is nice. Like you know the fat bandits, they spit yeah. the fireballs at you. Yeah. When I got to the point where I was fighting them, every time I'd block one, I'd get 16 experience, which is not a shit ton, but it was enough that I would just stand back. The moment they start shooting at me, I'd just target like a different heartless, and then just block all three fireballs back into that heartless to kill it. 
while gaining a little bit of extra experience at the same time. So it was, it was nice. It was nice to do that a little bit throughout the game just to, just to get a little bit of extra experience. And guard specifically is super, super useful for that respect. Right. Yeah. But I, I literally never use dodge roll. And I did this time. And it's so fucking good. <laughs> it's I don't know what I was missing. Well, I do now, but yeah, now nah, you do. But uh, good God, man! All right, so I guess I'll go through because there's a lot of characters that don't end up doing too too much. They're just kind of there. Yeah. Uh, I guess before that, what do you think of Merlin's little hideout in the? I like it. That's... I like that it's just empty, and then he actually does the you know the thing from Sword in the Stone where he. He opens his bag and he's like dancing and doing magic and they're all flying around and like all that shit. I thought that was cool. Pretty much. So I don't think we have a lot to talk about for most of these characters. So I'm just going to do their little descriptions. Okay. So Moogles escaped to Traverse Town when the Heartless invaded their home. They know how to combine various items to form new ones. Yep. And then... uh, And they're from various Final Fantasy games. Yeah. Uh, The ones that I remember them the most from though is Final Fantasy IX. Do they play a big part in that, or are they just kind of there? Decent part. They're part of the story and stuff. Okay. Not like not like, like a crazy amount or anything. You use them to save the game. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, they're like a part of Final Fantasy IX, which was pretty cool. So the next 99 puppies, because none of the puppies have names in the game. They're just the puppies. Yeah. Pongo and Perdita's puppies, when they work together, they can be tough to beat. Ever since their world was destroyed by darkness, they've been... Trying to get back together again. Uh, Perdita, a beautiful Dalmatian with her partner Pongo, she takes care of 99 Dalmatian puppies. Perdita will brave any danger to protect her spotted charges. Except any danger she faces would have to come seek her out because she just sits in her fucking house all day. Yeah, like if you try to take her puppies <laughs> again, she'll, she'll fight you, but... Yeah, uh, Pongo, a brave and intelligent Dalmatian with his mate Perdita, he looks after 99 Dalmatian puppies. Quick-witted Pongo is an expert at escaping from tight spots. Which I guess is from the movie, because I don't remember him doing that in the game. But No, no, he doesn't do anything in the game. Real quick, side note, I don't know if you know this, but Dalmatians are actually one of the breeds of dogs that are most known for turning on their owners. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Also, did you know, uh, I think they are born without spots. Really? Do they gain spots later in life? Yeah, I think so. That's kind of cool. That That actually is kind of cool. Merlin, a great sorcerer living on the outskirts of Traverse Town, Merlin's wisdom and magic powers rank second to none, and he teaches Sora and his friends about magic. He has a mysterious bag that can hold anything, no matter how large. Second to none, huh? How does he fare up against Yen Sid? I don't know. I I don't know who the strongest magic users are in the Kingdom Hearts universe. They never really say, but you have to imagine that they're pretty... They're probably pretty close. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't see one being far better than the other. They're probably... Yeah. Not that far. I think Merlin's pretty cool. I just wish that they did a little bit more with him. Instead of just teaching you a little bit of magic? Well, I like that once you get all the arts, you come to him and he gives you a new, you know, a spell... I think it's called, like, Spellbinder or something. But he gives you a magic-based keyblade. That's really cool. I wish that you could know that 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 was a thing beforehand instead of just finding out. I wish he would direct you to to do that as, like, an actual side quest. But the fact that he does it is pretty cool. What I don't like is you can go... He has an option that lets you practice magic. But all you do is you go into his, like, attic and you just shoot at flying furniture forever. You just... Like, there's nothing to it. I wish that they actually put something there and, like, gave you a reason to train magic with him. Like, instead of just finding better spells later, I think it would have been cooler is if you could, uh, at certain points of the game, your magic just gets better. You go back to Merlin and then you do training with him and he teaches you better spells and things like that. Give him more of an active role in the game. That would have been pretty cool. Yeah, he does kind of play, like, a sideline role in this. Yeah. Which is why he's a minor character. Exactly. Um, the fairy godmother, a powerful but generous and good-hearted fairy who helps Sora and his friends. Slightly absent-minded but an expert at magic, she gives Sora and the others lessons in magic as well as advice on their journey. 
Nice. Is she a fairy? Yeah, I get it, because fairy godmother. It's yeah. weird because she's a fairy, but so are the other three. The uh... Yeah. But they look nothing alike. Like They're different kinds of fairies. I guess so. What do all fairies look alike to you? Maybe. <laughs> Raised. I'd... I'm okay with the fairy godmother as a character, but it's the same thing with Merlin. Like, I feel like they just didn't do enough with her. I mean, not every character can be a main character, obviously, but I'm not a huge fan when they have a character that's useful for something, but they only give them one little thing for them to do. Right. In this case, she restores gems you find, summon gems, into summons, which is, which is useful, except the summons aren't that great. So the only one that I really care about is Tinkerbell. Yeah, pretty much. But it would have been nice if she did a little bit more. Even if it's just like you could bring her something that you found in the in game and like trade for new summons, just something. Yeah, that would. But you know, I don't dislike her as a character. Yeah, she's just too minor. She's just man. And this is the next one's actually kind of funny. So Cleo, do you know who Cleo is? Um, not positive. It's if it, is it like an inanimate object? No, it's a, like it's, the bag or something. No, it's the fish. Oh, the fish. Okay. But it's got no entry. Yeah, it's because it doesn't do anything. But it's just funny because you'd think J- Jiminy has her in the journal, but it's like, nah, I don't want to write anything about this stupid yeah, fish. I don't care about that stupid fucking fish. And then you got Geppetto and Pinocchio, which is funny because the first time you meet them is actually in Monstro, but they do become residents of Traverse Town. Actually, you do meet Pinocchio before that. You meet in Traverse Town. Really? Yeah. He's, uh, I don't remember how you trigger this, but I think it's just after you beat Traverse Town the first time. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, but, uh, he's like sitting, he's in the accessory shop and he's like sitting next to the counter trying to like reach something or something or other or whatever. But then you just, you have a brief little talk with him and Jiminy's like, you know, you can't lie or whatever. It's kind of a stupid little throwaway scene, but you do see him. Oh. How does he get into Monstro, then? I don't know. He just ends up there. He just wandered off. and. Yeah, he's just in there. I don't know if they say it, but I didn't see anything. You know how he got there? I know how he got there. He got there because he got high and just sort of kind of wandered off. <laughs> what did he get high on? I don't know. Wood? Life. Life. Uh, all right, so Geppetto uh, says, the kind, gentle clockmaker. Really? He was a clockmaker? Yeah. Huh. Anyway, all his skill went into making Pinocchio. When the little puppet disappeared, Geppetto set out to find him. But he and his tiny boat were swallowed by Monstro, the whale. Yep. Which, <laughs> it's got to be weird because Monstro is in space. So what did they roll a boat into space? Yeah, I don't know what how they did that, how they explained it in the Kingdom Hearts universe and all that. But, but anyway, I don't know. He's but, just a space whale. He's just a space whale, and so Geppetto doesn't really have a purpose other than to give you the Keyblade if you go meet him again. A yeah. Keyblade. So uh, Pinocchio, he was crafted by Geppetto. The Blue Fairy brought him to life to answer Geppetto's prayers for a son. He must learn courage, kindness, and honesty to prove he's worthy to be a real boy. It's my job to keep him out of trouble. Except that you don't. because you Yeah, you don't off. do anything about that. Yeah, you go to freaking <laughs> go with Sora off adventuring. <laughs> yeah. But then again, I guess... Which, by the way, I haven't seen Pinocchio. But is Geppetto just, like, really bad with the ladies? Why does he need to pray for a son? Why didn't he go out and find a lady and... I can have a son. You know, they don't explain it. He's just like, by the time the movie starts... He's an alone old man. Yeah, by the time the movie starts, he's just an old man, and he's like, he makes a puppet, and he's like, I wish you were my real son, and then the Blue Fairy brings him to life, and it's like, oh my That's gosh. That's really sad. Isn't it? And it's also kind of <laughs> creepy. Yeah. Imagine, imagine if you were a guy, a lonely guy, and one of your puppets just came to life, and you're like, whoa, I gotta stop taking whatever it is I'm taking, and... Sounds like Goosebumps. Doesn't it? Damn. Now imagine the flip side. Is it worse if it was a little puppet girl? Would that be worse? Why would it be worse? Just because of the implications you can put on it. Oh, that he was, you know, diddlinger. He was an old, a lonely old man, and he makes a little puppet girl that he wants real. Like, is it, or is it worse that it's a little boy still? 
Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> There's actually a, a robot chicken joke where uh, Geppetto... Well, no, actually, it's a Family Guy joke where Geppetto's, like, bending over to pick something up, and he's, like, looks over to Pinocchio. I'm like, hey, did you take the last cookie? He's like, no. You you could lie to me. I, would, I wouldn't mind. No, Geppetto, I would never lie to you. No, he's like, yes, father, I took it. Re- really? You you know, a little white lie or just something yeah, like that. He wants his nose to grow, essentially, to, yeah. to, to go into his asshole. I, I'm not understanding. Like, I get the structure of the joke. Yeah. But the practicality of it. Yeah. He would have to pull his pants down first. And then there's the, the, the prospect of aim. It's not going to just magically sync up. You know, there's actually a um, there's a uh, paradox with Pinocchio. I'm trying to remember. It's like something like my nose shall grow. My nose shall grow. What yeah, will happen. His be- brain will explode. Yeah, pretty much. Because if he if it if he's telling the truth, then it won't grow. But if he's lying, which he is, because you know what would happen? Exactly. He j- yeah, he said explodes, or his nose just infinitely grows. <laughs> So there's Pinocchio. Uh, then you got the three uh, Duck Brothers, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Uh, not really much to say about them as a character. They're just there at the shop to sell you stuff. Story-wise, they don't do anything. Yeah. Uh, so this will be pretty fast. Uh, Louie, one of Donald's three nephews, works with his brothers in the shop in Travers Town. Gentle and carefree, but notices a lot of things others miss. To find him, look for a green cap. So yep. he's, he's the green one. The green one, yeah. Dewey, uh, again, one of Donald's three nephews, always wears a blue cap, cheerful and easygoing. He works with his brothers in a shop in Traverse Town. Yep. And then Huey. Uh, Huey is the leader, and he keeps playful Dewey and laid-back Louie in line. You can spot Huey by his trademark, Red Cap. Yes. So those are all the Disney-related ones. And then the rest of the characters you get introduced to are all Final Fantasy characters. Yes. So, uh... And it's funny, because they, they used a lot of Final Fantasy seven. I, I wish they would use more 9 and 11. Or not 11, 12. Although, 12 was, I don't think, out yet. Well, maybe it was. When did 12 come out? Fuck. Either way. Uh, what did you think of, uh... Did you play 7? Yeah. Okay, so what did you think... I played 7 a bunch of times, dude. What did you think of Aerith and Yuffie? Like, were they pretty true yeah. to the way they acted in the game? Yeah, for the most part, yeah. It's that Aerith is not dead, so... Well, <laughs> I did like that Yuffie was Christy Carlson Romano. Is that the voice? Was it really? Yeah, Ren. Oh, dude, that's cool. From Even Stevens? Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who it was. I might be totally wrong, but... <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool, and I liked just, I'm the great ninja Yuffie. I'm a great she's ninja. Cool. She, no, you're right. She's it is. Yuffie. But she does get you know? a different voice actress in Kingdom Hearts uh, 2. Oh, does she? Yeah, it's Mae Whitman, which is actually, holy crap, is that who I think it is? Holy, I know that name. Is that, uh, oh, come on, is that, oh, yeah, it's totally Katara. Nice. So Katara plays Yuffie in the second game. That's pretty baller. So, uh, yeah, again, they don't really play a big part. Like, they help you fight a couple of the Heartless in uh, in Traverse Town. And then you do actually get to fight Luffy in, uh, or Yuffie. Y- Yuffie. Oh, I wish you could fight Luffy. That would be fun. He just comes in like, I want to be king of the pirates. I want to be king of the pirates. <laughs> you, you know where you are, Luffy. This is, this is Kingdom Hots. <laughs> yeah. But that would be a cool world to go to, One Piece world. and It's just like islands and stuff. Yeah. So you do get to fight Yuffie in... Uh... I actually really like in 1 and 2 whenever you fight the various Final Fantasy characters. But you don't get to do it enough. You don't. They're... Yuffie's actually not that hard. She just kind of runs around and then throws a giant... Well, she throws small shuriken at you first. And, and you're, you're supposed to knock them back with guard. Oh. And then when they, hit her, when they hit her, it stuns her. Actually, in that fight, you fight Yuffie and Leon. The way... I don't know if you're supposed to do it like this, but the way I always did it is I target Leon and then I wait for Yuffie to actually throw them at me and then I just knock him into Leon and that stuns him and then run over and just beat the shit out of her because she doesn't like block. She just kind of stands there and lets you wail on her and she has no health. So Pretty much. She's easy. Yeah, which sucks because I wish, I wish she was harder. 
Yeah. But that's um, that's my wish for a lot of this game and a lot of games in general. I wish it was harder. Now, I don't know how powerful Aerith was in the game, in, in the game she's from, but in this she, game... Uh, she her her f- final limit break could make everybody invincible. Okay, so pretty powerful, but in this game, she doesn't, <laughs> yeah, she doesn't do anything. She's nope. just there. You don't even get to fight her later. Nope. But uh, those Great two... Gospel. Those two... Actually, the Sid, I guess, from this game, because if you don't know, there is a Sid in every single Final Fantasy game. Yep. He just tends to look different. Well, I think starting from number two. I think two had the first Sid. Oh, okay. But I'm not positive. I didn't play that far back. But I guess this Sid, this version of Sid... Is the is, seven... Sid. Yeah, again, st- acted pretty much similar to the. His name is Sid Highwind, and yeah, he did. Although Sid Highwind in Final Fantasy VII, he wants to be an astronaut, and he builds planes and stuff like that, like airships. Oh, okay. Whereas in this one, he builds gummy ships. Gummy ships. So, yeah. So it says for Aerith, she lost her home to the Heartless at a very young age. Beneath her gentle disposition lies a strong will and a firm sense of duty. Many are naturally drawn to her. Aerith works with Leon and Yuffie to learn more about the Heartless and the key, in parentheses. Yep. Uh, Yuffie, a female ninja who escaped to Traverse Town when her home world was taken by the Heartless, she stays strong and cheerful in any situation. She works with Leon and Aerith to unravel the secret of the key. Yep. So I'm guessing they're from the Final Fantasy world, but... Hall maybe... Bastion. Well, Radiant Garden. Oh, they're from there, not from... Uh... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's their original world. Oh, okay. And then Sid, owner of an accessory shop in Traverse Town, a highly skilled engineer and a first-rate pilot, when the Heartless invaded his world, he escaped to Traverse Town on a gummy ship he built himself. He's an expert on gummy ships. Yep. Oh, yeah, and that's another thing. He is a pilot in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. That I actually do remember. In, in most games, he's, he's a gummy ship pilot, except for, I think, in 12 or 13, it's like El Cid, right? 12, it's El Cid. Okay. Actually, 12, there's two. There's El Cid and uh, Sid, F- not Fabul. Sid Fabul is from 9. It's, uh, both, spoiler alert, it's Balthir's father, Dr. Sid. Oh, dang. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you didn't get that far, did you? I did not. Dude, the, the story of that one is pretty awesome. We'll talk about I Final really Fan- like 12. We'll talk about Final Fantasy when we get to it. Yeah, seriously. Maybe I'll actually finish that game. Yeah, I hope so. Dude, we should also do Borderlands at some point. Because lately I've been wanting to replay a pre-sequel. Right. Play as the new Aurelia. So maybe you'll actually play through and finish that one too. The Borderlands. And we can actually play together on that game. Exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. we can talk about it. So the last character that you meet is Leon. Which is Squall. Squall Land- Landheart. Yep. And... uh He's the only one from... Fi- is he the only character from Final Fantasy VIII? No, Selfie. Selfie? Yeah, from Destiny Island. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is that the... Are they the only two? Um, let me think about it. Renoa is not. Sid Kramer is not. Zell is not. Cipher is in the second game, or Cipher. Okay. Remember the disciplinary committee? And then his two, the three of them are from Final Fantasy VIII. Rajin, Fujin, and Cypher. Okay. Um, Irving is not. Selfie is. Yeah, I, I, th- I, think, I don't think anybody else is. Now, I haven't played that game, but that makes me think that there's not a lot of... Your main part... Oh, and Quistus is not either. Your main party is like six or seven people. Wow, and they only chose Leon for the... I, guess, I mean, I guess there's only like so many characters they could have put in. Yeah, I'm but. glad they put Squall, though, and well, Leon, because he's just one of those badass characters. In the game, he's, like, really kind of almost emo and depressing, but he's not emo in the same way that, like, Cloud is. Yeah. He's just kind of, like, quiet, and it's just, like, he face palms all the time. Yeah. And he's just, like, a really good leader, and he's a great warrior, but he just kind of does what he does. And he doesn't talk that much, and he's just kind of, like, he's stoic. Yeah, and he does have the most ridiculous weapon. <laughs> the gun blade? The gun blade. Dude, it's the most badass weapon. <laughs> Wait, how are you going to say that's the most ridiculous in a game with a keyblade? Because it's a gun blade, dude. How yeah, but the name be- keyblade in itself is ridiculous because it's a it's not a blade. It's, it's a just... fucking cudgel. It's like a, a a mace. It uses its bulk. It how does it cut? 
at all. Yeah, that's a good point. Magic. Magic. You got to believe hard enough. Uh, but I, side note, really quickly, not we can actually do this whole discussion in a main show, but real quick, how uh, who do you think would win in a death battle, Squall or uh, uh, Cloud? Ooh, Squall or Cloud. Well, there's this thing. Final Fantasy characters, by the end of their respective games, get to be really goddamn powerful. Right. But I don't know if Squall at his maximum is strong as strong or stronger than cloud fuck i do remember that squall's final ability is like uh it's like it's called renzo kook in his it, instead of limit breaks but he has various versions of them like rough divide and etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah his final one is called uh lionheart i want to say and he basically remember in the game in kingdom hearts when you're fighting him and he like makes his sword all super long yeah he does that but in game, it extends out and it shows the planet very Dragon Ball Z style, and the beam flies up, and it's like going off the planet. That's how big he makes it, and then he just swings it and just fucking cuts everything up. So he gets pretty strong, but I don't know about that comparatively to Cloud. So I, I don't know. Maybe we'd have to do that in the main show and do some research. Do some research. We'll, pr- we'll you th- research Squall. I'll research Cloud, or vice versa, and then we can discuss it. All right. I'm actually going to write that down on my Screaming of the Ether list. So I think... Hold on real quick. Who do you want to... you want to do Cloud or Squall? Oh, I don't know. Squall, I guess. All right. All right, so... And now moving on. Sorry. So I think this is a good place as any to stop because now we're about to hit the hour and a half mark. Damn, we barely got anywhere. I know because there's a lot we to talk. We talk way too much. We go too in-depth. You do think? we really need to do every single character? <laughs> I guess not. I guess we can kind of just skip. Like, I guess we don't have to do the uh, journal entry for every character. But that's why I said we didn't have much to talk about. I would just say their thing and then move on. And yeah, uh, Unless true. you had something to say like you did with Merlin. and like you, I knew we'd have something to talk about with the Final Fantasy characters, which is why I did them last. Oh, of course. Um, We're not even done with Traverse Town. We didn't talk about the story of Traverse Town or the Heartless. Are we going to talk about the Heartless? Yeah. Why don't we talk about the Heartless? Not necessarily each individual Heartless, but the Heartless of each world. Like, I like that Deep Jungle, there's there's Monkey Heartless. And I like that there's the, the like, Bandit Heartless in Agrabah. And you do get to fight uh, uh, the, gu- the guard armor and the wizards. and Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Which, actually, uh, might as well tack this on here before we finish. One of my talking points here, I'll cross it off right now, is uh, Final Mix HD. I don't know if this is the same in Final Mix, but in at least in the HD version, they change the color of the Heartless. Instead of being mostly black, they're like actually vibrant. Yeah. How do you like that? I think it's cool. I mean, granted, I haven't played it in a really long time, so I didn't remember them being... You know, had I played oh, one... I absolutely did. I didn't know. It's been too long since I played the original that I just didn't notice. Well, I've played them a bunch of times, so... Oh, and it was, okay. like, the first time I saw the color changes, I was like, what the fuck? Are these, like, special new Heartless? No, they're just, I mean, even though there are new, rare Heartless, they, these are just color, they're just color changes. Yeah. And I actually, I like most of them, because it makes it more vibrant, more colorful. Which, don't get me wrong, I do like the darkness, because they are the darkness, but Kingdom Hearts has a kind of silliness about it, just like an inherent silliness. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of cool. So I like it. But uh, I guess next time we come back, we'll finish Travers Town and talk more about the the story up to that point, and then the uh, delve into some of the heartless that we thought were pretty cool mm-hmm. that got introduced. And I have a few. Oh, I gotta cross this off. We already talked about how Cloud looks Banff. He does. <laughs> I wrote that down when I first fought him. I'm like, dude, really? He just looks awesome. But we've got some things here. I've been answering it little by little, but what I would do better. Okay. Uh, we've got to talk about our favorite Heartless, the new rare Heartless, um, Are we the gonna various, go, do you go the various world tournaments. Do you want to go to talk about which Heartless was our favorite or just in general? Just in general. Okay. Uh, the Hercules Cup slash just the cups in general. The camera. Oh, my God. We're going to have to talk about the camera. We are. Uh, some other things I got here. Riku owns the beast. Maleficent, O face. <laughs> There's a part where she like makes this face at fucking Riku. It's just great. Winnie the Pooh, how much I dislike it. 
just things like that. We got a lot to talk about with Travers now. We, yeah, yes, we do. Because you come back to it so many times also. Yeah, there's just so much to do. But we'll do that as the story progresses. Like every time we have to go back to Travers Town, we'll talk about the story up to that point. Right now, we're, we're, uh, when we come back, we'll just talk about when you first get to Travers Town, what you end up doing. The little differences and whatnot. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Like and that the bell thing and the reverse armor and stuff, like, et cetera. All that crap. All that fun stuff you get to look forward to. Yeah! So, uh, thank you for joining us on our, yes. first, our first of probably many parts of Kingdom Hearts. If it took us this long just to get up to the... <laughs> the first world after the tutorial and we're not yeah. even done with that yet yeah seriously uh probably in many episodes but but uh, it's okay because we're not putting too much time per episode oh we're, we're trying not to we don't want to make them too long so it's nice so that, i like yeah. doing it this way so it's, if anything for me fuck you guys for me <laughs> So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we were your host. I am Chris. With me was Justin. As always. And uh, we will see you next time. I love you. Bye. Bye.